morning, everybody. It's Dr. Rick. Uh, uh, had my morning workout. Uh, did a couple of things. Uh, now I'm going to relax for a while. Have a few more things. I, like I said earlier today, I am going to go light today because I'm going hard the remainder of the week. Uh, I'm going to get what has to be done done. I'm going to close out the night um, prayer and meditation. Make sure I'm straight for this coming week. There's a lot going on, and I want to be on my A game. Uh, there's a lot of people depending on me to come through for all the things that we have on deck, uh, starting with my family, who I love dearly. Um, we're always starting... Uh, video out talking about the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, the Odyssey Project, and the importance of supporting the work that we do. And it's not my strong suit. It's not something I want to do. And a lot of people obviously pick up on the fact that, you know, it's not something I really want to do. Um, but it is something that I have to put my ego aside for it, something I have to put my pride aside for it, something I have to put my own personality in place for it because this passion of mine, this purpose of mine is bigger than me. The black man lead is simply one part of a long journey for Rick Wallace, for me in taking the time to understand on a scientific level why black people are where we are. Systemic racism, uh, multi-generational transmission of trauma, how that plays out in our lives in multitudinous ways in different areas and aspects of our lives. Uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence and the culmination of our inability to properly socialize young black males and how that plays out in the academic system, which literally preps and stages them for the prison system. And we talked about that actually on this weekend's episode of The Teachers, uh, where we were blessed to be able to sit down with advocate uh, and educator Marshada Caradine. Um, and she is something special. She lost her husband uh, to COVID a year ago, and she's still pushing, she's still educating, she's still informing, uh, she's still speaking truth to power. She's been banned on several different platforms because she's calling a spade a spade. And the truth of the matter, one point that I kept hammering home during yesterday's episode of The Teachers is that we consistently end up in last place because we don't understand how things work. Uh, our homes and families have been decimated because we don't understand the schemes and machinations that are at play to ensure that we don't have strong family uh, environments and foundations and we literally succumb to it because we don't understand how things work. We are consistently in last place in the socioeconomic order of things. We're on the last rung, the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder, and it's consistent, it's constant, and it's because we don't understand how things work. We're consistently trying to communicate to a people who have proven to us that they don't have our best interests at heart. We're trying to communicate to them why they should do something about our dilemma. Why they should do a better job at educating our children. Why they should uh, institute prison reform and academic educational system, system, system reform so that young black boy, boys aren't staged and pushed into uh, the prisons in our country. Right now, there are 2.3 million incarcerated individuals in America 
by far larger than any other uh, industrialized country on the planet, by far. And out of that 2.3 million, 1. Point, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1.1 1. 1 of those are black men. So almost half the prison population, male, female, black men. Now, I'm inclined to suggest that if we don't do something different, we're going to find ourselves in a hole that we can't get out of. Uh, there are some people that I've communicated with, Dr. Claude Anderson being one who feels where I've already reached it. We've reached the point, according to Dr. Anderson, where we are permanent. We're going to be a permanent underclass in this country. Uh, he long ago stated that it would be 2013. If we hadn't made a major move by 2013, we simply were not going to make it. And that has come and gone. Um, when I had him look, and him and his wife, Joanne, uh, when I had them look over the blueprint for Black Empowerment, which is on the Odyssey website, if you want to check that out, just go to the Odyssey website. And that's uh, the Odyssey Project 21.top and go to, I think it's uh, programs, uh, programs and initiatives or something like that. I can't remember how, how it's set up, but it's, it's, it's a tab of itself and you uh, hover over it and it'll uh, click on it and it'll drop down and you'll see the Blueprint 2.0. Um, and when Dr. Uh, Anderson looked at that. He and Joanne thought it was pretty impressive. They endorsed it. Um, and um, it's pretty much it that I did, I did a version of what I consider to be the black code of conduct. Um, any community has to have a code of conduct. You have to have a code of conduct. You have to have an understanding of what happens when that code is violated. Uh, the code has to be um, a, a, statutes and policies and principles that protect the interest of the community as a whole. We don't have that in any particular area. We are operating on a free fall right now and we are experiencing the results of it, which is antinomianism. Everybody doing whatever they want, trying to go and do whatever. And it, it feels good initially to the soul until you look at the consequences and long-term repercussions of uh, an unconscious society and we are responsible for ourselves do they owe us reparations absolutely and we should never give up our fight for reparations and we should never feel that reparations are a handout that's money owed to us but what we must also do is we must develop a mindset of understanding how we build with or without reparations because that's going to be the determining factor of just how powerful we become or not. Um, when I ask for support with Black Men Lead, it is because I have done the extensive work and research to know that if we don't socialize our young males, they will be erroneously socialized by a system that's designed to put them in the in the vein and the in the path of error and it's our responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen and at this point we've done a poor job of protecting them we've done a poor job of preparing them we've done a poor job of holistically educating them and putting them where they need to be with that being said i am again asking that you support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. I've been doing this a long time and as Dr. Blanchard pointed out in uh, yesterday's episode of The Teachers, over 90, the high 90s of whatever I've done, I've funded. Um, I don't complain about it, but no matter how well I am, I have a family to take care of. I have a bunch of other things that I'm trying to do. And so I think it's only fair to ask the community to share the responsibility. Um, as I said, this is something that if it was up to me, I wouldn't do it. But I have people who believe in me 
and what I'm doing that are pressing the issue because they believe that I don't put enough energy, effort, emotion, and consistency in doing it. And it's because number one is when you do the work you do at the level that I do it at and you see the response you get in the way of support, you learn very quickly that that wasted energy of trying to get somebody to support you could be put somewhere else. And I'm just built like that. I'm built like if nobody's going to do it, I'm going to do it. And when it's just a project that it's me, that's fine. But when you got other people saying, hey, look, I'm going all in with you. And they know that it has to be something more than what we can do on our own right now. And they're looking at it. I owe it to them to say, OK, I'm going to put my pride down. I'm going to talk. I'm going to share. I'm going to do the best I can to educate the masses to show them why it's important to support the work we're doing. But that being said, look, I'm about to get off of here because I'm at the cigar shop and this is going to be a few hours of rest and relaxation, talking noise with these guys about nothing. Uh, but uh, we do get into some pretty deep conversations. A lot of good things come out of this shop. I got three colleagues that are psychologists uh, and we get together and we talk about healing our people consistently and we are really putting together some great stuff in the coming future uh, again it's going to be uh, he heavily contingent upon how much the people get behind it we can't keep expecting them to fund our revolution uh, which is kind of crazy but that's what we're going to you know go see you know I, I'm talking about doing well, have you have you tried to have you know do you actually think they're going to fund the revolution they'll fund a program that sounds good They'll fund a program with good optics. They'll fund a program that seems to do with everything. But if the programs that they were funded with all the money that's being poured into programs, would we really be on the decline in every area if those programs are actually working? There are programs out there that work, and I can tell you they work because we've been doing them for years. And you, you, you're not going to get the support because they benefit off of our young boys failing. And so they're not going to finance their empowerment. Just trust me on it. Been doing this a long time. Uh, just look at the system. Just ask yourself a simple question. With all the money that's being flowed, they said they giving this fund, they giving this grant, they giving this and this and this to all these programs. But the prison rate is going up, the dropout rate is going up, the incarceration going up, the violence is going up, intimate partner homicide is going up, intimate partner violence is going up. If all those things are happening and they got all these money into these programs, what's going on? The programs don't work. The program have programs have major, major glitches. I've offered to be consultant to some of the programs to fix the things that are broken so they do work and they won't let you in because they know that if the program actually starts working, they stop getting funding. Everybody's eating off the backs of blacks, even blacks. And that's the thing that we're going to have to stop. I don't have a problem with nobody making money if they're doing something that's blessing the people and the people are advancing. I don't think nobody should die poor if they raised up their people. I, I, I'm not that person. I'm not going to get on somebody because they eat. But what I'm saying is if you're eating, your people better be eating too. If you're eating, your people better be healing too. If you're eating, your people better be rising too. That's the thing. The same thing I've always said with preachers. I have no problem with you by driving a Bentley as long as you're not driving a Bentley in a church where people are struggling to pay their bills. I'm good with it. If, if everybody in your church eating because you teaching principles on wealth building and wealth and uh, revenue generation and, and all the things you do to protect your uh, wealth and all that, then I'm all for it. Same thing with people that are in the community. If your programs are serving the people and they're winning, you should be in a place where you can take care of your family and leave your family a legacy. You shouldn't die poor and leave your family behind after you've served an entire people. Uh, I watched that happen to Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin and broke my heart. He's not the only one. I can go down the line of families that are descendants of beasts. Nothing left to them because we didn't take care of them. So that's not what I'm talking about when I talk about the ones that come. I'm talking about the ones they know the program doesn't work, but they're getting all this money to pretend and they're selling that story and that bull crap to our people. And we are just falling by the wayside. With that being said, look, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for letting me have your ear for a while. 
Uh, the link is in the description box. The Cash App uh, account handle is in the description box. Show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. Y'all guys have an unbelievable day.